Hi, good morning one and all and welcome to the video. This video I'm going to be talking about AWS uh, Kinesis Dynamic Partitions for AWS S3. What do I mean by that? Well, a lot of companies and applications are using Kinesis Data Streams, Kinesis Firehose, Kinesis Analytics and essentially um, you are also pumping data through Kinesis Firehose on AWS S3. Well, uh, it's if you want to create partitions uh, among your data, what do I mean by that? Let's say date based partitions or basically partition based on transaction ID, customer ID, so that when you're running glue crawlers, you can optimize your lake essentially because the amount of data scan would be much more smaller. You can run uh, analytics then using using Athena, visualize using QuickSight, but most probably I want to talk about partitions in this video. So let's get started about dynamic partitions. Well, I have, you know, two to three slides, then I'll show you a demo. Okay, so let's read a little definition. Dynamic partition enables you to continuously partition streaming data in Kinesis data firehose by using keys within the data. This makes it easier to run high performance cost efficient analytics on streaming data in Amazon S3 using various services such as Athena, EMR, Redshift Spectrum and QuickSight. In addition, AWS Glue can perform more sophisticated extract transform load jobs after dynamically partitioned streaming data is delivered to the S3 in use cases where additional processing is required. Partitioning your data minimizes the amount of data scanned, optimize performance and reduce cost on uh, your analytics queries on S3. It also increases granular access to your data. Kinesis Firehose delivers streams as traditionally uh, used in order to capture and load data into S3. To partition, uh, essentially to partition on streaming data set from AW, uh, for Amazon S3 based analytics, you would need to run partitioning application between Amazon S3 buckets prior to making data available for analysis, which could become um, complicated and costly. With dynamic partition, Kinesis Data Firehose continuously groups in transit data with dynamically or statistically defined data keys and delivers the data to your individual S3 prefixes by key. This reduces the time uh, to insight by, by minutes or hours. It reduces the cost and simplifies the architecture. And as I said, it's showtime. All right, so I'm gonna create a very simple data stream. I'm gonna call learn streams, okay? gonna create that okay my stream is ready now I'm gonna create my firehose okay uh, we'll click on delivery streams this will be a data stream destination will be s3 and I'll teach you how to enable dynamic partitions now okay uh, source settings will browse the source will be learn streams this is where the data is gonna be received uh, we will name this as delivery streams okay that's good uh, come down uh, then I'm going to enable dynamic partition over here. Now, what does that mean? So I'll show you a sample data first and then we'll talk about that. Okay. I uh, don't worry about the keys. I'm going to delete this after the video. So I have name, phone number, city, address, date, and customer ID. I'm using a faker library to generate a fake data. I'm going to show you the power on how you can partition the data now using uh, dynamic partition, right? So now I want to have a partition based on customer ID, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a random number between one to five, but I want to show you the, how, how to do that. So I click on enable, uh, multi-records, I'm going to be disabling that, new line delimiter, I'm going to be, if I want, I can enable that. Then inline parsing for JSON, I would enable that, right? And here is the, here is the uh, things that you need to add. So over here, if you expand, they give you a sample on how to do that. So for example, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say customer ID because uh, if you can see my screen, sorry, I thought I was showing my screen, but so if you see my screen, this has all the records, right? It has the JSON records, right? So what I want to do is I want to partition based on this. So in my JSON outer directory, I have a customer ID key. So I'm going to say dot customer ID. That's the query language that in order to add the partition. Now, once I have that, I need to create my uh, S3 uh, prefix, right? So I have a sample snippet. So uh, here I'll show you what I'm doing. So here I'm saying customer ID is equal to, and then my data will be dumped inside that. So I'll be creating a folder called data. And then inside that, I will have my partitions, right? So that's done. Uh, now error will go to the error folder. So I can put that and we'll click on uh, create delivery stream. Seems like I'm missing something. I'm not sure what, but let me double check. Yep, that is thing. Destination. Uh, let me select the destination. It's going to go to my Somilsha dev buckets. So now that's done. I'll click on delivery streams. At this point, um, it should have been done. So it would take a couple of seconds and then I'm going to rapidly pump, 
rapidly pump data to my Kinesis um, uh, data streams. And my data stream is connected to my de delivery streams and it should uh, partition my data for my S3. Then I'll show you, you know, using glue crawler or Athena beautifully, you know, you can query your data, blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna generate data very rapidly now. As you can see, I'm generating some fake data using Faker library. So, which is publishing, you know, a lot of events to um, data stream right now. As you can see, I'm again running it. So we keep on pumping in data into our uh, data streams. And I'll show you how automatically it will partition your data now. So I'm gonna again run this. And as you can see, in a couple of seconds, we are bombarding events, right? We are pouring in so many events. So I'm again gonna generate that. And then we gotta wait for some time, depending upon the buffer time and the size that you have set up on uh, on your settings, it might take up to a minute or two to reflect those data into your S3. And one more time, and then we'll go to S3 and um, take a look at that. So as you can see, so far I have published so many records to uh, my Kinesis uh, data streams, and my uh, data stream is connected to my delivery. Oh, it's still creating though, I should have waited, but it's fine. So we'll see here. Okay, my delivery streams is ready. Uh, let me do it one more time. Wanna make sure that we dump enough data. Okay, so I think it should be fine. Uh, all right, guys, as you can see now, I have finally the data. I see a data and customer ID one, two, three, everything is partitioned well, and then that's the data. So if I open this up, and I just wanna show you quickly, uh, if I open that up in Notepad++, I should have all my data in a beautifully formatted um, f JSON. So yeah, JSON, de uh, JSON uh, delimited automatically, right? So everything is done. Now I can run my Athena queries on the top of that. I can run my glue crawlers, which I'm about to show you. So I'm gonna go to the glue. It's very easy. I mean, the same thing. I mean, uh, the concepts are important is what I'm trying to say. Once you understand the concept, then it's like, yeah, same thing, you know, so. Crawler, same thing. I'm gonna create a simple crawler that's gonna crawl over S3. Uh, query my data using Athena, uh, data lake, right? Add crawler, test, gonna click next. Uh, data store, we'll okay, we click on here. Uh, Sawmill shard dev bucket, uh, we wanna crawl over the data next. Now uh, we have an existing role, uh, run on demand. Uh, we don't have a database, so I'm gonna say sample DB. I'm gonna click on create, configuration, add new columns only, next, finish, and there you go. Oh, ah, wanna click on run crawler. So, uh, crawlers are ready, bang, 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 and now we open up Athena, like that. It might take a second or two, but let's be patient. So now, you know, it's easy, right? Uh, if you know the fundamentals on how everything works, then you can just build things like that, like fast, you know? So now it's gonna run, it's gonna populate my table, uh, uh, you know, and then I can query the data using the standard SQL. If I wanna perform jobs, I can write PySpark jobs, I can run EMR. Uh, there's a lot more you can do with this, right? So, <coughs> so just waiting at this point. It takes about a couple of minutes, you know, to do this, but. Okay, um, almost there, 40 seconds. Stopping one table there, come here, refresh, sample DB, that's my table, preview data. Oops, hive invalid metadata. Metadata table name is invalid. Table descriptor contains duplicate columns. Oh, it contains some duplicate columns, so uh, the query ran against a sample DB, unless unqualified by the query, please post, okay. So, seems like there is some problem, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on uh, data, uh, no, I'm gonna go to the tables and then I'm gonna click on edit table details. Oh, not that one. I wanna actually edit the schema. There's some column that is messing up. Messing up. Oh yeah, the customer uh, is in uh, duplicate. Remove that, I save this. Okay, go back to my Athena. Okay, so now sample DB, preview table. This should solve the problem. And there you go, guys. We have everything done. Kinesis data stream, Firos, glue crawler, Athena, S3 everything in one video. Well, hope you have enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this entire walkthrough, let me know in the comment section below. And if you have any more questions on AWS or anything in Python, let me know in the comment section below. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling, keep programming. See you guys.